top flight signal callers. Here's the kicker, Jake Elliott, ready to get this one started. And we are underway from FedEx Field. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. Cousins brings out the Washington Redskins, and this last week was playing against his old mentor, Kyle Shanahan, threw for two touchdowns, ran for another, as the Redskins held on after nearly coughing up a 17-point lead. And how many games have we done when we've talked to players who have something like that in the game where they're going against an old coach or a guy that they played against in college, they all say, oh, that doesn't matter. I just worry about my own performance. <laughs> we don't believe that for a second, do we? No, because you know it sticks with them. Exactly. He had something to prove and wanted to show his old mentor that he still has it, and that he did. And he's going to lose yardage here back to the 14-yard line. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. If you're the coaching staff upstairs, you might want to file that play away. Do you see how fast the safety closed on that one? Coming up and run support, made a big-time tackle. Might want to try and check into a pass next time. Yeah, got him for a loss. Really, really great play defensively. And a long way to go for the offense here on second down. They'll keep it in the hands of Kelly. And he's going to be taken down right at about the 15-yard line. Only a yard on the gain there, and that'll set up third and 13. We get a look at the offense now for Washington, coming off a 26-24 win last week against San Francisco. And what have you thought of this offense? What have you seen from it? Well, we know Cousins triggers everything. But in order to have open lanes to throw, they want to run the football. Rob Kelly's out. So they're using Chris Thompson and Samaj P. Ryan, the rookie out of Oklahoma. Now, in the game against San Francisco, the numbers weren't terrific. 29 carries for those guys if you took Cousins out of the mix for 68 yards. But 29 carries, that's enough to keep a defense's attention and allow Kirk Cousins to throw the ball downfield. Keeps himself upright. But in the end, the pressure too great, and he goes down. Timmy Jernigan. He's the one that gets him down. It'll be a loss of five, and it'll bring up fourth down. There's a little bit of defense right there. Nickel set, five defensive backs. They just snuffed out every round that was going. Quarterback never got rid of the football. Here's Tressway now, as his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. <laughs> so a change of possession here on the punt, and the Eagles will have it taking over first and ten. So now here comes the Eagles offense as they get ready to take over. They'll be led out by their quarterback, the guy out of California, the former Cal Bear, Jared Goff. Didn't play in a traditional pro-style offense in college. In fact, at Cal, he played in what they call the Bear Raid. Threw it around a whole bunch. 96 touchdown passes in three seasons. This guy took the ball from game one as a true freshman and never missed a start. So he has a great amount of toughness as well as the ability to throw the big-time ball downfield. Carry for LeGarrette Blunt. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And this O-line, it is the lifeblood of the offense. They establish the tone. Mean, nasty, physical. They can't wait to get after people. That allows the rest of the offense to feel confident. Second down following the run. Oh, 
Again, here's Blown. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. And now a look at the Washington defense. There were high hopes in Washington in 2016 as they expected their defense to ascend into a top 10 type of a unit. Instead, it was a struggle all season long. So they had to retool this pass off season, and they're going to start with trying to lock down the running game. Very tough to do in the NFC East, and if they do that, maybe their Pro Bowl cornerback, Josh Norman, will have more opportunities out on the corner. play will be blown up he'll lose yardage back at the 38 losing two yards that time and now it's fourth down they tried to run right into the teeth of the defense on third down but um looked like those teeth were pretty sharp <laughs> <laughs> they were having absolutely none of it stuffed him for a loss yeah couldn't get any leverage up front and move people aside in order to run the ball Donnie Jones set to punt it away now in his 14th year in the NFL. Back deep here, Jamison Crowder. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. comes a redskin offense now as they get set to begin another possession. Well, they're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again, so it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. And not great starting field position here for the offense. Starts with Rob Kelly. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. No gain on the play there. Second down. And we peek at the defense now for Philadelphia. In 2016, the Eagles showed that they were going to be aggressive on defense. A lot of man coverage and send the pass rushers after the quarterback. I don't expect that to change at all in 2017, but they are looking for increased play from their cornerbacks trying to lock down some wide receivers. They'll go again with Kelly. And a nice pickup as this one gets them to the 10-yard line. It'll be a pickup of five, and that leaves him with five more. Third and five now. Rob Kelly was the number three rookie runner in the NFL in 2016 behind Ezekiel Elliott and Jordan Howard. What a nice start for him. Seemingly out of nowhere because he was undrafted and I think ready to put his imprint on this Redskin franchise. One reason, he can do everything. Run it with power inside, catch the ball out of the backfield, and also pass protects really well for his quarterbacks. Cousins to throw it. And this is going to be incomplete. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. Here's Tressway now as he'll kick it away for the second time. Spin balance. Well, that'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And possession will switch hands first and 10. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. And a three and out on that first drive. We'll see if they can do better here. They should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now. That first series, everybody goes out a little extra emotion. So now they get a chance to go back out and say, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan then on that first drive. Sometimes it absolutely serves that way. You get a second opportunity. Nothing big happened. But then again, you didn't commit any mistakes either. Off you go. 
Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still first down. He's knocked backward as they will mark him down. And the play goes for 19 yards, gives him a new set of downs. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. First and ten, golf. Now he'll let it go deep. He's got it at the 15. And he'll be marked down deep in Washington territory. They give him a gain of 37. When I watched Jared Goff on tape at Cal, I saw a guy who wasn't just a dart thrower. You know, a lot of people said, ah, oh, he's perfect for the West Coast offense. I always thought he could do a little bit more, and that was the reason why. He can push it downfield. He has a good, strong arm. First and goal from the eight. Another play, the clock hits triple zeros. And time is up on the first quarter. Can't wait to see what the second quarter has in store. We'll head back to FedEx Field after this timeout. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Back live with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. It's the Eagles with the ball here to begin quarter number two. And they've got it here with a first down. just outside the five at the six. Give him two yards on that one. Second and goal now. Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stop troops right there. And if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle. Keep coming after them. Put the pressure on them. They'll run again with Blum. And they'll get him down here at about the five-yard line. Call it a gain of a yard as they get a little bit closer here. It's third and goal. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is a time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four-down territory. Now gone. This is taken in by Jeffrey. He's got it. Touchdown, Eagles. Alshon Jeffrey, a five-yard touchdown. And the Eagles are able to cash it in for six. And partner, they found a gap there on the post pattern, and it was in the middle third of the field. And that's really difficult to do because ordinarily the safeties are back there to prevent that happening. But they found the opening and exploited it. On for the extra point, Jake Elliott. He's got it, and the Eagles lead at 7-zip. Hey, hey. 
The drive summary that time, five plays. The result, Philadelphia in the end zone. now to kick this one away. Now it's Chris Thompson on the return. And nice work on the return as he'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. The Redskins offense now, they get set to take over here. This is their third drive right now, maybe not about points, just about getting something. They haven't gotten a first down yet in this game. It's a mental barrier you don't think about until you go a couple of drives without getting a first down. Then all of a sudden it looms big. It gets harder and harder to actually attain that first first down. on first down. It's brought in by Jamison Crowder. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. When I evaluated Jamison Crowder coming out of Duke, I thought he was already a pro in how he approached the game and ran routes. And I think his head coach, Jay Gruden, agrees. Yeah, he has said repeatedly, we want to keep him on the field as much as possible. He had 847 yards, seven touchdowns a season ago. A give. This is Kelly. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook. Go play action. Toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. They'll hand it off to Kelly, and he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands so they can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. This is Kelly. <laughs> and he'll get this across midfield to the 48. And he's able to get most of what he needed on the carry there. Seven yards on the gain, and it's third and two now. That was a good run, and it got to the second level. And what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play, first level being the defensive front, last level being the secondary. But the strong safety position ended up making the tackle. And oftentimes, we call them a hybrid. Combination defensive back, combination linebacker. We saw the linebacker make the stop. On third down, that's Thompson. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. It'll be called a gain of two, and that'll leave them with some options here on fourth and inches. I bet they thought they had picked that one up because it was a third and two call, and they got awfully close. Now we're at fourth and inches. I wonder if they think they're feeling lucky here and maybe want to go pick it up. Here's Tressway now as he's on to punt for Washington. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. No returning this one. It sails out of bounds, and they'll spot it right at the 20. 
The Eagles coming out as they get ready. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. And it looks like this will likely be the last play before we hit the two-minute warning. They go play action here on first down. His throw incomplete. A minute 58 to go in this first half of play. Back to FedEx Field following this short break. Coming up at halftime in a little less than two minutes, we'll send you to Orlando where Larry Ridley is standing by. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. Offense still needing 10 yards, second down. Goff now looking to throw. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off at the 24. And his guys are going to get the football at the 23-yard line. Offensively, when you see cover two, the thought has to go through the quarterback's head. Drive the football when making throws. It's not just the deep guys covering. It's the guys underneath you have to be careful of. Drive your throw. Otherwise, you see what results? Interceptions. So out now come the Redskins. They were forced to punt last time, and I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot. Great opportunity to run your full playbook. If they want to take a shot here, they can go ahead and do it. And they'll start this drive with very good field position. Following the interception, Cousins. That is caught right at the 10-yard line. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. That one goes for 16 yards. It sets him up first and goal. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. play doesn't go anywhere backwards losing yardage to the 11 that's gonna go as a loss of four and it'll be second down wow that play got shut down in a hurry as soon as the snap came you could see defensively they were just closing in that was going nowhere yeah you count on your offensive line to give you a little bit of space a little bit of time so you can make a move there was none there for him A second down throw for Cousins. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Washington. Terrell Pryor, an 11 yard touchdown. And the Redskins are an extra point away from tying this thing up. And a little time left on the clock, so on the other side, they're thinking, gosh, we'd like to get that lead right back. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Here I am <laughs> going ahead and tapping out the first half. Oh, There's still time. Way. They've got to make a decision about what they want to do on the kickoff or they want to let their return guy touch it. The try here for the extra point. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And the result, a touchdown for Washington.
So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Getting set to go again here on offense, Jared Goff trots back onto the field. And it was his interception on the last drive that wound up leading to a game-tying touchdown. And somehow, you can make this a positive, though. You know why? Game tied now. So you're not protecting a lead. So you're not playing that way. You've got to go get the lead again. So maybe it loosens him up a little bit and allows him to go ahead and be a little more free in his play. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Over the middle to Smith. Give him a couple on the catch at second and eight. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Shot before break here. Golf. And he dumps it off to Blunt. And he takes this one just shy of midfield all the way to the 49. So a touchdown apiece. That's what we have the show at halftime as they head to the... Here in Orlando, let's get back up to our nation's capital as we rejoin Brandon Guy. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This fielded at the two. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. Out come the Eagles now as he'll go on offense first here in the third quarter. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that'll give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. They start on the ground here with Blum. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. Call it a loss of two on the play. And it'll be second and 12. And while that play was unsuccessful to start the second half, I'm not sure that you just totally abandon what you do running the football. Maybe you make some adjustments in your run game and do things a little bit differently. But that doesn't necessarily mean you just go to the pass and do nothing else. And the offense moving in the wrong direction here now as they face a second and 12. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Trying to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Maybe a gain of a yard that time, but yeah, from the spot, actually no gain. So third and long. So nothing there, but maybe you blame that on the blocking. Yeah, at some point, you've got to win at the point of attack. And on that play, that was all the defense. They made it happen. Throwing on third, Goff. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. It'll be a gain of 16 and give him a first down as well. And I know you can't really see it, 
But that play spells frustration with a capital F for the guys on defense. They covered everyone else, end up going to the running back out of the backfield, and he picks up a back-breaking first down. So the offense has it first and 10. Now a play fake here on first down. But it's caught on the right side at Smith. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. Well, that certainly looked like the Torrey Smith we knew in Baltimore. A guy who can just run past defenses, and what do they say? Take the top right off of them. Game-changing speed, and the days in Baltimore good, days in San Fran not so great, but now hoping to get back to his former self. I would say they have an extremely motivated wide receiver in Torrey Smith. This has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. It'll be a loss of a yard, and it'll be second and 11. To say they've kept him under wraps running the football, that, that's an understatement. He's been completely neutralized. Yeah, they've essentially taken him out of the game, haven't they? And you know all the teams say, we're not going to let him beat us. But that's exactly what's happened here. They've looked up to that. the gun. And he takes this for about six down inside the 40. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. From the gun on third down, gone. And that is incomplete. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? And this won't get there, won't be on line either. It's no good, off to the right, and we will remain tied here in this third quarter. Everything looks good, good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it, and this one winds up no good. So here's the Redskins offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. Their defense did its job, yielded no points. Now it's the offense's turn. And how much fun is that when you set things up to start a half and you just tell you guys, hey, if you can shut them down, get it back for our offense, we can roll. And they played out perfectly. Now can the offense do what they wanted to do at the half, which is find those weaknesses and now attack them and score some points. And break this tie. So the missed 56 yarder, and now the flip side. Good starting field position at the 46 near midfield. They'll start on the ground with Kelly. And he's got it across midfield and down to about the 47 yard line. Just what you want on a first down run, call it eight yards, and it's second and two. First play of the drive, let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher, a really nice run. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Play action now, Cousins. And down he goes. The Eagles get there for the sack. Vinny Curry able to get in and run him down for a loss of 14. 
Well, they were coming out of the 4-3 defensively. Pressure coming off that right side from the DM. And that's the blind side of most quarterbacks. If you're right-handed, that's the side you don't see quite as well. And that's why you rely on your left tackle, maybe your highest paid offensive lineman, to take care of you. In this situation, that didn't happen. Cousins with work to do after the sack as he brings his guys up on a third and long. From the gun, here's Cousins. Looking for Pryor long. And a shot taken on third down unsuccessful. Fourth down now. Sometimes we wonder about play calls, but this one made perfect sense to me. He's got the only touchdown that they've scored in this game. Tried to get it to him again on another deep ball. Here's Tressway now, as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. This is away and a very good kick, angled for the sidelines. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Play action. Here's Goff. Going underneath to Blood. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. A solid gain of 15 yards in the sticks move. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Final minute now of the third quarter. Here's Blow. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. So statistically, both of these offenses have a rough time getting a running game going. But boy, what a nice play there defensively. Tackling him behind the line, but you're right. You look at the numbers. Neither side looks on track in the ground game. A little bit of ground to make up for the offense as they face a second and 11. To throw is gone. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Stacy McGee in there to bury him for a loss of 11. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop, and they can often hit big, but sometimes they take too long to develop, and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? Typically a blitz, and even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz, if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen, now that allows your blitzers to get there. Back now at FedEx Field. 7-7 is our score. Pretty even matchup so far as we start quarter number four. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. A shotgun snap for gone. And a pressure gets to him again. Preston Smith in there to drop him. And back-to-back -back sacks now bring up fourth and long. And, partner, it's safe to say that the secondary really contributed to that sack. Yeah, nickel set, five defensive backs. They covered everything. Nowhere to go with the football. But my question is, why didn't he throw it away? Oh. 
Here's Donnie Jones now as he's on to punt for Philadelphia. yard punt with a coverage holding him to three on the return and it'll be Redskins football now with a first and ten out comes Washington's offense as they get set to take over here and a tight game after punting last time see if they can get something going on this drive as they head to the field now with the game this close you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now but they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play They run with it. It's Kelly. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards, back to the 33. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Well, you had to punt on your first drive, and on the first play of the second drive, you end up going backwards. I would dare say they need something good to happen right here, right now. Fancy there, a little smash mouth football right up the gut on the dive, and it turns into a huge play. You talk about the fastest way to the secondary. Right up the gut, as you described, and sprinted into the secondary for a long, long run. And now a first down following that long game. Play fake, Cousins. And a pressure too much that time as Cousins goes down. Brandon Graham in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sack. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> time to the tailback <laughs> a big hit knocked down sideways right on the 30 yard line only three yards on the pickup they'll be left staring at a third and 14. partner we know today's nfl is really built around the guy throwing the football but these short runs they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along you control the clock you control the ball and that way you often control the game now Cousins, under pressure, and he will go down. Sack back at the 38. Timmy Jernigan in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This to break our fourth quarter tie. And that is no good. And a costly one there as this game remains tied here in the fourth. So it's an empty possession and as a kicker, not the way you want to start your day's work. And now each team's missed a field goal here so far, Brandon. So apparently... Neither guy is immune. The Eagles offense now, they head back on the field. 
And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Hitting the home stretch here in a great game, a tie game. Let's see if the defense can get the stop they need to get the ball back. Off on first down. He finds Aguilar over the middle. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. And 15 yards there on the catch and run. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision. And receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. It's lining up first and ten. Time for a break. We'll come back and see how it all shakes out after this. So it's Eagle football here as we get you reset. They've got it first and ten as they search for a go-ahead score. Short gain there down to the 37-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. I like it. I like the call. Still an opportunity to run the football and chew up a little more time off the clock. the play on the ground that brings up second down here now they try the right side here and he stopped immediately there no gain on the play there so they're left with a third down and six and the trend continues here in the fourth like it was in the first second and third he's had nowhere to run and you're probably thinking to yourself why do they keep feeding him the football well, they trust him first and foremost. They do believe that over time he might actually pop one of these runs. The bottom line is he takes care of the ball well for them, so they keep handing it to him. Go on. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Fourth down now and defensively, Charles, you know, they're just asking this crew for one more stop. And you know that they're feeling the momentum right now. But they have to be very careful not to get over-exuberant, over-excited, and blow an assignment and give up the big first down. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. It's picked up. A weaving through traffic, and now he's free. 20, 10, and that's a touchdown as they've broken our tie here in the final minute of the fourth. We talk about it a lot. One of the dangers of the long field goal, you got to kind of hit it low and drive it. That makes it susceptible to a block here. Not only do they block it, they return it. And how about how well they did on the return, but they didn't create a penalty. Oftentimes in that type of a scrambling situation, someone will clip, someone will block below the waist, right? You name it. In this case, though, that didn't happen. They formed it up, and he took it all the way back for a touchdown. comes the kicking team here for the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game.
The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This one fielded at the five. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And out now come the Eagles. One possession game, <laughs> time very much a factor. How does the offense handle this situation? Well, in a lot of cases, they should be somewhat relaxed. And I know that's counterintuitive because this is a pressure situation. But this is Friday practice every week of the season. You go over this situation, having to go downfield, limited timeouts, got to get out of bounds and keep the drive going and set yourself up. Defensively, you can't just lay back and let them do whatever they want. So it is a cat and mouse deal here. How much pressure will the defense bring and how much pressure can the offense handle? We're going to find out. False start offense. The crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. across midfield and just shy of the 40. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. Back to throw. Fighting his safety valve here. That's complete. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout. As they get it with just 19 seconds left on the clock. So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play. So second and medium, second and five now. Smith has it, and he gets this one all the way down inside the 15, just shy of the 10. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Back to throw. That'll be incomplete with nine seconds now showing on the clock. Nelson Aguilar, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. He'll look to throw. This is caught. And now with four seconds left, we get a timeout call. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. The Eagles on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. One last. 
last throw here for goal. And his ball is caught. It's a touchdown. And now in the final seconds, they're a PAT away from likely getting this thing to overtime. Yes, sir, that touchdown puts him in striking distance. And let me tell you something, forget being conservative here. Go for it, go for two. Wow, well, going for it on the road. Want to win it right now? Want to win it right now, have the momentum, go ahead and get it done. And now a critical extra point attempt here. And he has got it. So barring something crazy on the kickoff, we're looking at an extra period to decide this one. So that drives six plays, 75 yards. And it was capped off by an Eagles touchdown. to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. That'll be taken in the end zone. And with time a factor here late, he'll just take a knee and they'll put it out to the 25. 